All right. Now what I have to do is level the top side of the sides, the side that the top will be glued on. And I start initially with just a little block plane to make sure that the sides are level with the heel block and the tail block. There's not a lot that I have to do with this plane. If, as you can see, they're, they're really close to uh, where they're supposed to be because I, when I glued them in, I glued them in that way. But you just want to go over and, and trim what you have to so that you don't have to do as much work down the line with a with a sanding. You have to be careful how you do this. Uh, you need to plane in the direction of the grain. If you don't, you can get tear out and splits in the wood and all kind of things. And I'll use a straight edge to kind of check and see if everything is around the same height. And that looks pretty good. So now what, I, now what I'll do is I've got a big board that's got six grit sandpaper paper glued all over the surface that's touching the sides right now. And I'll just sand with that until everything is level and on the same plane. And I'll check it along the way uh, with my hands to see if it's smooth. And you'll see me here, I'm putting some hash marks on the heel block and the tail block because that plane from the tail block to the heel block has got to be dead flat. It's got to be right. And so what I'll do is I'll put the sanding block on there and check and see how fast and how evenly the pencil marks are removed from both sides and they're uh, being removed really, really fast. The, the top is easy. The uh, back side, the back where the back joins these rims, have to be have the, the sides have to be tapered and all of that jazz. We'll get into some of that in this video, but we'll have to complete it in a second video. And that front lower bout there, or upper bout rather, that right there is just a tiny bit low doesn't really matter because the top doesn't actually glue to that side. Uh, I'll be installing what are known as curved linings. And they, because the sides are too thin to actually have enough gluing surface to glue to. So you glue the curved linings to the inside of the sides. And then you glue the top to the curved linings. So that's what we're doing now. We're making this as flat as I can get it so that I can install the curved lines. A lot of people call them curfing, and I'll use that term as well. So now, if you flip it over on its face and hold down in, at those two spots, if there's no clearance between the bottom of, uh, of that rim and the board, or if there's just about a sixteenth, then that's in spec. And so now we're going to install the curved linings and all they are is thin strips of wood that have had a saw curve cut in them about every quarter of an inch along the way and it makes them bendable and flexible. And now you see probably the best glue spreader that was ever created. Your finger. When you put glue on something, on wood, what you want, you want just enough glue 
not too much and not too little and so what you're looking for is you want the surface to be completely covered with glue but you want to be able to see wood grain through it if you can't see wood grain through it there's too much glue on the surface if you uh, don't see the uh, glue evenly spread across the surface then there's not enough glue so that's what I'm doing is I'm just trying to evenly spread this across here and get as close to the perfect amount of glue on that curved lining as I can possibly get. I've already pre-cut the length of these linings so they fit the side. There you see a leaf uh, because we're outside. And I'm going to, you see that pile of clothespins in the middle there. They have rubber bands wrapped around them to make them uh, make their clamping force stronger. And this is an old technique. You can buy clamps specially for this, but they're really expensive. This was used. This has been used for many, many decades for a very long time to install curved linings, and so this is what I'm using. Uh, Clothes pins are cheap and you need about 105 or 110 of them to do a side. Uh, right now I'm just positioning the lining. I want it to be slightly proud, like a 64th of an inch proud of the sides. I don't want it to go below the edge of the sides, but I do want it to be just slightly proud. And what I'll do then is sand those linings down to the sides flat so that I know that that plane all the way around is flat and level. And that break there, I can just butt it right up against there and continue on gluing. A lot of guys will glue lining in in three or four pieces because they don't have a lot of clamps. It's not a big deal. And I, I do have a bit of a gap, about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, I'm sorry, about an eighth of an inch uh, from the end of the linings where they butt up to the heel block and the tail block. I don't know if that, I don't know why, but I see a lot of acoustic guitars. If you look at the linings inside, uh, there's a gap there. So I'm going to maintain that myself. There's purpose in it. Even if I don't know what the purpose is, there's purpose in it. There I am making sure that that lining is proud. And now what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll add clothespins and butt them as close to each other as I can. And that's why this works is because each clamp individually might not have a lot of pressure, but the com combined uh, clamping pressure of all of these clamps, all of these uh, clothespins, is enough to do the job. And so now they're both done, both sides are done and I'll let that dry and then we'll move on. I'll let these dry overnight. All right, now what I have to do from about two inches behind the waist of the guitar toward the heel block, there has to be uh, a uh, an angle. And what will happen is eventually I'll refine that angle into an arch for the back. And so what I've done is I've marked that from the top of the heel block 
to that uh, position about two inches behind the waist and everything behind the waist will stay flat and then it'll drop off toward the heel block from that point on and I'm just using a that block plane to bring the sides down at that angle until we come flush with the heel block And this is my first time doing this, uh, and I'm taking a lot of short strokes. The next time I do it, I'll take long strokes with the uh, plane. I think it'll be a lot easier and a lot simpler. You live and learn. This is the first acoustic I've built. And there you see we're moving on down. We're getting that angle contoured into the sides. See long strokes like that, uh, I will do. The next time I do it, that's the way I'll do it. And, you see, if you're not careful of the grain direction, if you're not really careful how you do that if you manhandle it like I was doing that's what you get that's not a hard fix it should glue right up real easy and you should be almost unable to tell that it was ever split like that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this down and I'll let that set overnight or until I get good weather again and I'll finish this angle and uh, we'll move on to refining the, uh, where we'll install the linings. We'll move on to install the linings for the back, the curved linings, and uh, refine that arch for the back. But that'll have to be in another video uh, right now. I think this one's been long enough. So I'll have to see you then. But we'll clamp her up and she should work, be just fine. God bless you. Thanks for coming along and watching and being part of this channel. Greatly appreciated. I'll talk to you later.